What the fuck is up, every pony? It's your old pal, Corpulent Brony, coming at you with an analysis about drama in the analysis fandom. Hooey, this is a big one. As probably all of you know by now, the Toon Critic Y2K drama bomb has dropped. Everyone basically learned that he's a disgusting pedophile. Go to pedo.horsefamous.com if you want the full story there. I'm not here to rehash that. But really, I want to look at the reason why Toon Critic got away with this shit for so long. As you may or may not know, I, at least at one time, was a member of the vaunted Brony Analysis community. I was even in that secret group known as The Rift for a spell like three years ago. It's not what, probably more like four years ago. And it's not what most people would expect, really. At, at the time, it was just full of people who I'd never heard of. Mostly relatively young people, which I admit did make me a tiny bit uncomfortable. Even the older people were still mentally kids, neats who had, hadn't yet even left their parents' basements. You wouldn't really find any famous analysts like I Love Kim Possible a lot, Silver Quill, or Digibro in that old rift. Hell, even Dr. Wolf would only pop in very rarely. And I think Anthony C was only there for like about half the time I was. So the people who ended up being the regulars who everybody looked up to and interacted with were the almost famous analysts like Golden Fox, Red Cord, and Toon Critic. I barely lasted a year in that cesspool before realizing I couldn't take any more in leaving. Why? Well, the reason is one of the same ones that I believe led to Toon Critic getting away with his shenanigans for so long. Something that none of the other analyst videos, with the possible exception of Pete's, have even touched on. And that would be this mindset of avoiding drama at all costs. The Rift was apparently the safe space where disagreements were not tolerated. This contrasted so vividly with the idea I had in my mind of analysts discussing and debating the show. If people began an argument, they would often be told to drop it. Hell, if you were in an argument and losing it, you could just say, drop it. And if the other person didn't drop the argument, guess what? They'd face the ban hammer. So arguments would constantly start in the rift and they'd never end naturally. They would never get argued out to the point where each side called the other fuckwads and then they hugged it out at the end. So this negativity would just fester inside the parties involved and nothing would ever get resolved. Returning to Toon Critic now, I have to point out that I would periodically receive messages from him on Skype asking for money. He'd be running his own little GoFundMe and, and ask for donations, or when he opened up his Patreon, he asked me to contribute to it. Needless to say, I never did, because the vibes this guy sent off were just never good. And frankly, I didn't trust him at all. I know for a fact he would e-beg like this to everyone in the Rift. I had a lot of my friends telling me he did the same shit with them. And I'm also fairly certain a lot of people were blinded by his relative fame in the community and would just give him money. He was one of the most active, popular analysts in that community, after all. One of the reasons that I ended up leaving the Rift was the drama involving Fallen Wish. She had joined another Skype group I was in begging us not to make videos about her GoFundMe campaign, which I had no idea of until then, and it made me curious as to what she was talking about, so after reading up on her drama in the rift, I, I couldn't take any more, and I just left the damn group because her drama was obviously fake and everyone was just buying it. I didn't have any evidence at the time to support my suspicions, but it just felt wrong. Fast forward a few months, and after making some pretty good money on her little campaign, she decided to start touring the United States, going to brony conventions, etc. So I wrote an article about her duplicity in horse news in September 2015, and I caught a shit ton of flack from the analysis community. Like, holy fuck, I became probably the most hated brony analyst, and I'm pretty sure this resulted in me being permanently banned from the rift of woe is me. If you want the full story though, check out stealing.brony.money. So yes, I do write articles very occasionally on the infamous Horse News website, which is known for posting about fandom drama in an often abrasive manner. But my article on Fallen Wish, really my first long-form expose there, 
About a year later, this was vindicated when Fallen Wish returned to her supposedly super abusive home situation once her money ran out. D did I ever receive an apology or forgiveness from those hurling the worst invective from the brony analyst community? No, sir, I did not. And one of the things that made the Fallen Wish article so popular was the inclusion of some details about an actual BronyCon orgy that occurred in August 2015 that involved Toon Critic. During this degenerate fuckfest, Toon Critic apparently took up a plush and rubbed his penis on it. And that plush happened to belong to Minty Root. It was a special gift given to him by the con for his work on Good Morning Baltimore. If you want to read more about this story, uh, Minty Root wrote up the details in a post that you can get at defiling.plushy.horse. So about five months after this Fallen Wish article, um, a story about Toon Critic was actually posted to Horse News in January 2016. That's actually two years ago from now. And I was closely involved in the research on this one. I didn't end up reading it because of, I was still a little trigger shy from that first Fallen Wish article. But this article explained how Toon Critic had actually stolen money from Fallen Witch that she had built out of her analysis community supporters. The article actually put a lot of pressure on Toon Critic, and he ended up repaying Fallen Witch. So you can learn more about it if you want to by going to stealing.more.brony.money. I, I don't really want to rehash these stories here, which is why I'm giving out these URLs, because otherwise I could sit here for hours and I don't want to... I feel like this is already going to be long enough. I'm just trying to establish a pattern of behavior. In April of 2017, I wrote an article detailing a series of events that occurred at BabsCon that began with the theft of Toon Critic's hat in retaliation for his defilement of Minty Root's plush and ended with Toon Critic making up tales about the hat thieves that would be believed by con staff and would lead to the hat thieves being banned from the con for things they did not do, specifically for sexually assaulting guests. Again, eventually the article's take on events was proving right. BabsCon rescinded the bans and even instituted a ban on Toon Critic for being a community guest for a year. I never made up a cutesy domain name for this article, so just search for a horse news, Toon Critic, hat, toilet, or something. So far, we have an established pattern of some very public behavior that I was aware of. Asking for money constantly while still finding the funds to somehow always attend all these brony conventions, defiling a plush that didn't belong to him, making fun of Minty Root for being upset about it in public videos and at convention panels, withholding money that didn't belong to him for Fallen Wish, spreading false stories about con-goers in order to get them banned from conventions. And now we found out recently that many analysts were aware of him hitting on girls constantly, public groping, etc. And still, somehow, we get to where we are today. I cannot say I'm surprised. In response to each of the events above, his friends, these very same people who are just now releasing these videos to distance themselves from this pedophile, they shielded him. They made excuses for him. And if anyone spoke up and caused drama, I'm fairly certain those people would be dealt with swiftly by banning from their communities. And many who may not have had the clout of this middle upper echelon of horse reviewers probably didn't even feel comfortable saying anything about it. Again, for fear of being seen as trying to start drama. I mean, hell, even Mad Munchkin's video about this, about the whole Toon Critic thing, she said that she no longer wants to talk about it and will remain silent on the Toon Critic situation after that video. It's just a continued drama avoidance. It's, it's really unhealthy for the community and for the individuals thus affected. And it only leads to more of this kind of behavior. I mean, we, we know that the video that was released where Toon Critic basically admitted to this, this video was released only because it was leaked. It did not come out because the people who recorded it wanted it to come out. They did not want it to come out because they were more concerned with their own personal little careers on YouTube and, and very thick finger quotes careers. They didn't want this thing released. They didn't want the truth to get out there about what a fucking scumbag he was. So they were still shielding him. So in closing, I, I really want to point out that 
These analysts who shielded Tomb Critic, they're not really representative of all the Brony analysts. At least, I hope they aren't. I, I honestly don't keep up much with that community anymore. One of the side effects of being in the Rift and my subsequent disillusionment was a general distaste of most of this type of content, which eventually led to me basically giving up on releasing regular videos. I'm sorry to any of my viewers who stuck around that long. So don't blame all of them. Hopefully they will learn from this experience that trying to avoid drama at all costs is never the right answer. Although, based on the responses we've seen so far, I'm, I really don't have my fingers crossed too hard on that. So thanks for watching, thanks for listening, um, and thank, hell, thanks for sticking around and, you know, being a subscriber this long, or if you're not a subscriber yet, uh, whatever. Thanks for, you know, finding this video. Don't, don't feel obligated to like it or subscribe or anything, because I gotta tell you, I'm probably gonna be releasing videos very rarely. I make no guarantees. Okay. See you later, everyone.